everybody's favorite time of the year. But why are we going to wait? We ain't waiting until Black Friday. I want to give you guys the biggest opportunity that I What's going on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony, and of course, none other than world-class professional fighter, Fast Eddie Chambers. Black Friday, everybody's favorite time of the year. But why are we going to wait? We ain't waiting until Black Friday. I want to give you guys the biggest opportunity that I have ever given to grab all 16 of my masterclass courses for over 90% off. I've sold these courses previously for $300 a pop, and now you can grab all 16 for less than the price of one. I want you guys to head over to CoachAnthonyBoxing.com and if you want to grab one course at a time, you can also grab those courses for only $47. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this sale is not going to last. So what I'm going to need you to do is go to the website and grab it now because as soon as I raise the prices, not only am I going to raise the prices, I'm going to charge more than I've ever charged because the value inside of these courses are second to none. Oh, and how can I forget? Every single person who grabs the Master Boxing Bundle is going to get it and Enroll to the CA Boxing University, which is a private community where you can upload your sparring, ask questions 24-7, show your heavy bag work, basically share your journey with a bunch of like-minded people. This is a no-brainer, guys. So you guys already know what to do. CoachAnthonyBoxing.com. Box Nuts. Go make sure you guys go to the story link in my bio, guys. What's going on, guys? YouTube, YouTube, Facebook, everybody. What's going on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony, and of course, none other than the world's fastest heavyweight in history, Fast Eddie Chambers. Okay, the one and only. You hold on, can you name a faster heavyweight? They're gonna, they gonna name like about 50. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, but yo, check it out, man. Today. Um, I want to work on some basic stuff with you guys, okay? Well, first and foremost, hold on, what's that? So, I'll get my phone back. Yeah, All right, cool. So first and foremost, man, what's up to everybody, man? I hope everybody had a great Sunday. This is something that you guys could work on tomorrow. I know a lot of you guys are probably just chilling. Told you guys we were going to come back to the gym. It's a little bit under the weather this weekend, but we still showed up for no days off November. You know what I'm saying? So just want to say thank you for that. Of course, the Black Friday sales about to end, guys. I'm going to raise the price. It's not ending. Thing, but the price is about to go up on it. But this is the final week. OK, this is the final week. So I'll probably go up a little bit tomorrow. It's the final week. And then, of course, everything's going to be back to normal. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's taking advantage. Also, these type of streams right here are going to be exclusive for the CA private community. We're going to have ex exclusive workshops like this. You know, what I mean, all the time. That's just an extra benefit of being part of the CA boxing community. You got professional fight fast Eddie Chambers. y'all. Seriously, man, don't get no better than fast Eddie Chambers. You got your boy, Coach Anthony. And today. Today's stream is a little bit inspired by somebody in my community. And um, the thing is, you have people that they always ask me, like when they're shadow boxing or when they're hitting the heavy bag, uh, what are some of the things that they should be working on or how should they approach it? And one thing that I always like to tell people is when you're hitting, when you're shadow boxing or hitting the bag, you kind of want to approach it like you're really boxing somebody, right? You don't want to just let your hands go now. However, I always say there's a few things that you're focusing on when you're shadow boxing. First and foremost, you're focusing on your form and technique. You want to make sure your punches are being thrown properly. And there's going to be times where that's the main focus. There's going to be other times where you're focused on strategy and how you would approach a fight. And you always want to focus on punching, defense, slipping, footwork. All these things are included together simultaneously when you're shadow boxing. And then there's going to be times where we're going to up the punch count and we're going to work on our conditioning through shadow boxing, okay? There'll be times where I might say, pick it up, and I just want you to shoe shine and step around and run your punches and, and all that stuff. And that's because we want to get your heart rate up. Now, 
And also for certain situations, you may get into a serious fight and you may have to run numbers like that in a fight just to be able to survive the situation, whatever. So you want to be prepared to do those things, even if you don't use those things at all times. So shadow boxing and heavy bag to me are very similar. The only difference with a heavy bag is you get to hit something. You get to feel the impact. Um, you know, as shadow boxing, you don't get to feel impact, but you get more movement you get more of the ring awareness so they both have their benefits okay so today what i want to focus on and it's funny eddie the reason why i said i was going to tell you because eddie don't even know what the hell he's about to do because you know what i mean but he's he's pro boxer fast eddie chambers yeah anything i tell him he knows because he's been through it okay and one thing about eddie he's been through it okay and that's why you guys got to understand so the other thing i can say is this when you were fighting sam peter how we were talking about how you threw all those jabs before you even threw a right hand. Facts. Okay. So if you guys go back and I'm scared to like stream fights and do film study, we were going to do film study on Sam Peter and all this stuff. We'll do that in the community, yeah. but on YouTube, I'm just too scared. I'm just too scared. I almost lost my channel. Y'all for those of you guys who don't know, I almost lost my channel. And if I would have lost my YouTube channel, that'd have been the end of coach Anthony. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have been like, what happened to coach man? He's gone, gone off the face of the earth. We don't want that to happen. So I got to make sure I protect the channel. But um, what we're going to work on is how I would have my fighters approach a heavy bag. And it's going to be very similar to how you threw so many jabs before you even threw a right hand. And then I'm going to make some points. I'm going to have you do it. And I'm going to have Zach do it. Yeah, the one and only Zach. Okay. <laughs> because you got to understand, I want you guys to see it from a professional fighter's perspective. And then I want you to see it from a beginner fighter's perspective. Calm down, guys. Calm down. Calm down. All right. See, these kids, man, you get two kids and they don't know how to act they don't know how to act okay. right right so um that's what we're gonna do we're gonna focus on how you i would do the shadow boxing but we're on this side of the gym this is something i would really want to do in the ring so we're just gonna use the heavy bag you know what i mean so let's just make sure the visuals are good for the bag get some gloves guys and let's get to work however first and foremost anybody saying anything let's say what's up to the people uh, real quick zach yeah um this is actually one you can answer real quick. Coach Anthony, is looking weights a good idea for boxing? Um, I think if done properly, uh, you have to know how to do it. And there's definitely people out there who are experts in that field. Um, however, just traditional body, uh, you know, bodybuilding style weights. I, if you're not looking to be competitive, I don't think it's a big deal. But you got to understand when you're lifting weights, right? If you're lifting like a bodybuilder, you may move up a weight class you don't want to move up to. You know what I'm saying? So you may want to be careful with that because, you know, you end up gaining some sort of weight. Also, it could slow you down and different things. But if you lift the right way, design for boxing there is a way to do it it's been proven all these professional fighters nowadays are utilizing strength and conditioning coaches and they're they're improving their strength and their fitness and stuff and i do believe that there is benefit to it you guys can ask questions but after we get our point across because at the same time i do want you guys to have an idea of what we're teaching today but at the same time we are going to do q a this is going to be something that we're going to focus on in the beginning segment and toward the end we're going to go ahead and do a q a what the fuck sorry sorry i'm curious robin says still need help with the back shot oh man uh, yeah I ignore that dude all right go ahead continue Hey, uh, <laughs> Sub Coach Bluffton, was this inspired by me or is that cat? No, who, who's that? Who said that? Ray Marguerite. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't inspired by Ray. Man, let me see. I'm not sure who Ray is. Ray, Ray, the Ray and Marguerite. Ray, What are you looking at? Ray. Oh, the Ray, Ray. Uh, oh, my boy. Oh, Rare Breed. Okay. Nah, nah, not inspired by you, Ray. Not inspired by you. Somebody in my private community who asked me some good questions. And um, so I decided that this would be a good video to make for everybody, not just for him. So I'll probably send this to him as well. But uh, yeah, man, get your gloves. Get your gloves. <laughs> I'm taking it. 
I'm behind. I'm behind right now. I'm behind this. Now, I know you ain't say that. I know you didn't say that. Stick him right in the hole. Mr. Claus himself said that. Stick him right in the hole. Yo! I'm taking over Coach Anthony Shane. Coach Anthony Jr. What about I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. You got Coach Anthony Jr. in the building. I'm more like a, like a big Jr. <laughs> Very little. Pause. Hey, hey, hey. Time me up, pause. <laughs> <laughs> pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Hey, yeah. yo. You said it, though. You said you're going to stop me up. Pause. Yeah. You have to put it. Yeah, nobody heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. 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 Hey, lace him up, coach. You know what I mean? You said, tie me up. <laughs> I'm trying to see. I'm, I'm trying to see. Uh, I'm trying to see though. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Um, you guys get to the heavy bag real quick. All right. I mean, I guess. I guess this is gonna work. I guess this is gonna work. All right. So I'm gonna let Eddie do this first. Okay. Before you guys work together. And the main focus is this, how to approach a heavy bag. All right, now, it just depends what level you're at, okay? But if you're at the more advanced level, meaning you can add footwork, and my man right here, Zach, he is a beginner. However, he is advanced enough that he can use his footwork. He can punch as he's moving. I don't necessarily recommend that everybody who starts off boxing moves as they punch. I think some guys, they're just not ready for that yet. I think that they should just stand in front of the bag and get their technique right, learn how to turn their punches, learn how to step right. I see it all the time, man, with a lot of, I got a lot of, not a lot of guys, but I got a decent amount of new guys. And it's probably that your metal's trying to do too much movement early on. Yeah. And you kind of want to allow them to understand how to punch properly first before they move, have their hands up in the stance, because a lot of times they'll start moving and their feet will come too close together. And, you know, there's a lot of things with the movement. So if you hold your stance for long enough time, practice that, then it becomes a part of you. Then you can start to move. Right. I think a lot of you guys underestimate that. I think a lot of guys want to just get into it and just want to move. And I get it. I get it. You're like, man, I'll figure this out. I just want to move. But if you really want to do this the right way, until you're ready to move, I wouldn't do too much moving. Now, these guys are going to move today, however. So these are this is mid-level, intermediate, professional Right. And Eddie, I want you to demonstrate real quick. So what we're demonstrating now is when you approach a bag, how you're just establishing your jab for before you even let anything else go. <laughs> just the importance of establishing the jab. All right. So start working that bag. <laughs> And of course, you can still put other shots behind it. I'll start putting some hooks in there after your combinations too. Like start showing me everything, but just keep setting it up. So time. So the key here is the key is here is Eddie's still going to go ahead and throw his combination, work his angles, work his pivots, etc. And Eddie's became a switch hitter over the years, so he likes to switch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he likes to switch his stance, okay, quite a bit. But for those of you out there who are just working from one stance, my whole point is you're going to utilize your jab more than any other punch. So if, let's just say you throw 100 punches per round. Yeah. In my opinion, at least 50 should be jabs. Absolutely. 
You know what I'm saying? At least 50 because the jab is what's setting everything up. And if me and Eddie are boxing, the chances of me just throwing combinations and being successful are very slim. But if I'm working the jab and Eddie's looking for the jab, we're sizing each other up, we're finding each other's range, that's more realistic. So one good way to do this drill so you could develop this because a lot of you guys out there might not be used to just utilizing the jab is to dedicate one round to the jab. So this round, I'm going to have Zach and Eddie only throw the jab four rounds. The jab can go high. The jab can go low. They can double. They can triple. They can do different things. They can circle both ways. But they're going to focus on just getting comfortable with a jab. All right? I'm going to set the bell. And I'm going to get behind the uh, – so, so all I want is the jab. So what you, so what you think, man? What do you mean? How many, how many I can get in the round? Oh, 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 that's first. How many jabs you can actually throw? Oh, okay. Give me one second. Oh, that's actually on, that's actually on our drill, on our conditioning drill. It is. Yep. Okay. Work that jab, guys. Keep your count if you want. Keep your count. Yep. <laughs> No, hold on, hold on, hold on, Eddie. Hold on, Eddie. I want you to box it. I want you to box it. I know, I know you were just jab drilling down. I want you to box the bag. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much. So notice, guys, I got these guys right now. Both guys are just working the jab. Both guys are just working the jab. Eddie's circling to his right. Adding the head movement. Double and triple you. There you go, Zach. There you go. And you know what's funny? Time. Time. Do you know what's funny? Because people ask me this question all the time about the jab. How do you jab to your right? Now, when I made a video on my, if you got, for the people out there who have my course, how to shadow box, I talk about how you circle, stop, and pop. Eddie, work the jab, just circle to your right and then pop the jab like, yeah, like if you're going to the right. No, 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 no. Like if you're actually, like if you're actually boxing me, right, and you wanted to circle to your right, and then you stop and then you pop. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay, so right there, time. Why do I like Eddie doing that more than just jabbing and stepping? The reason for that is because he actually gets a real jab. Okay, if you're just jabbing and stepping to your rear leg side, if you're a southpaw, it'd be your left. Okay, there's nothing on that. People ask me that question all the time. Maybe some of you are thinking it, but Eddie's actually going to move over real quick so they can see Eddie. Eddie's going to circle to his right. Eddie's going to circle to his right, stop, and then he'll throw. You see it? Now, now when Eddie's in front of me right here, if he wants to work his triple jab or double jab, pop, 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 right? But now he's going to circle to his right. You see that? He'll stop and then throw. Now, when he stops and throws, right, when he stops and throws, he's actually, is like if he's starting just throwing a jab from that center line, but the circling was simply just so he can get over to his right side. So that's just a point that I wanted to point out because I'm watching you guys do it naturally. And then when I said it, it kind of threw you off. Yeah, but I see him doing it naturally. And that's, I get that question like a thousand times in my DMs. How do you circle to the right when I throw the jab if I step to the left with the jab? I don't step to the right with my jab for my orthodox people. We circle, get to where we want to go, and then we throw the jab. And when we circle, just to give you guys a little point of advice, step back before you circle. So let's just say, yeah, exactly. So right now, let's say he's working his jab. Pop, pop. Oh, yeah, double it. Pop. Yeah, step around. Go ahead. Pop, pop. When I step in... You see what he did? He took a step back. Do a slow-mo. Double your jab. Pop, pop. That's a step. 
He's already cleared. Yeah, now it. he'll circle to get his new spot, which is technically an angle. Yeah. When people think about angles, they think about these short, beautiful angles, but just circling to a new spot is getting a new angle because we're trying to get to a new spot. Just like when he steps around me with a double jab to the left, he created an angle. Okay, double that jab, throw that straight right hand. Pop, pop, boom, you did the San Peter. He did that to Sam Peter. I want y'all to watch the first round. It takes him about two minutes before he throws his first right hand. But what did you do? You were luring him to sleep with a jab before you decided to throw it. All right. So now you guys can actually give me another round. What I asked for originally, guys, is the teacher and me just took over. All right. All right. That's what we're doing it for, right? That's the content. Yeah, yeah. It's like every little detail counts, guys. Every little detail counts. Absolutely. All right, go ahead. I'm behind the computer, guys, so you guys can ask me questions. Say one up there. Yep, jab only, guys. Keep going. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I'm glad that helped you, some of you guys, man. <laughs> Prodigy, what's going on, man? You see, we got Eddie Chambers working the bag. We're doing jab only. One of my fight night guys, they don't believe in the jab and fight night. And fight night, they don't throw jabs. They say if you throw jabs, it's unrealistic for some reason. <laughs> Zach, you're being a little lazy with that jab. I need more. Sir, use that bag at the end, Eddie. Use that Muay Thai looking bag at the end so, Eddie, so, so Zach can feel more comfortable circling out. Because <laughs> I can still see you in the frame. You like that bag better anyway. So there you go, guys. So that's how you would work your jab. That's how you would work your jab for a round. Now, Eddie, being a professional, you notice in front of me, Eddie's throwing his jab from down here, right? He's throwing up jabs. He's mixing up his jabs, but he has experience. Yeah. He could do that. Some of you guys need to be right here popping your jab. You see what I'm saying? But some of you more experienced guys, up jabs, slip over, spear jabs, pop, pop, popping your jab, right? Always looking to go to a new spot, okay? So now you've already been developing your jab. What do I like to do off of that? Now I'm gonna say round two, work the lead hand. So now everything off the lead hand. So jabs, hooks, hooks to the body, jab, pop. You see what I'm saying? Learning again to lure your opponent to sleep before you release that right hand or that left hand for the south pause. All right, so go ahead, work. Go. Lead hand only, lead hand only, guys. <laughs> You're controlling that range, Eddie. Make sure they, they see what you're doing. You're controlling that range. I said, keep controlling your range. <laughs> Now, time, time. Look what Eddie's doing, y'all. This is where we come down to the fundamentals. Come in. Eddie's throwing a hook, and then he's, he's doing it naturally on the back from years of being a professional fighter. Again, pop, 
All right. And not only that, he rolls in that situation. But if he wanted to, he could double off the reset. So right now he throws that hook. Right now, no, 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 watch this. Throw that hook off the double. I want you to bring the second one upstairs. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so I'm here. Bop, bang. You see what I'm saying? Because when he throws that body shot, I got to respect it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, but depending on what he feels, yeah. maybe, maybe he throws that body shot. <laughs> And then my counter is the hook, which is uh, most of the time that's the counter, right? We we did that. We did that, and then the next day we watched the film study. Somebody did, yeah. right? Everybody thinks about this. Now people ask me about the. Now I'm giving out too much. No, no. Cut the stream. <laughs> Cut the stream. Zach, get the gloves off. Cut the stream. Yeah. Too much free stuff. If y'all don't take advantage of the Master Boxing Bundle, if you guys don't get into the private community, I don't want to hear nothing. If one more person says that my funny videos where where I'm screaming is clickbait, that's it. Done. We're not doing this no more. So check it out. I want to give you guys another pointer. All right. If I'm fighting Eddie like this and he throws that hook to my body, I'm probably going to shoot the hook. If I'm bladed like this and he shoots that hook to the body, I'm probably shooting the uppercut. So we talk about positions. I got a video pause. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we talk about positions <laughs> in, in, in one of my videos called positions. Right? <laughs> we got several. We got three different positions <laughs> that we're going to utilize. All right. First one is Eddie. first one. Eddie's directly in the center line. Right. That's that's the that's typically where we learn the basics of boxing. Right. So my hands are up. Right. This is the first. What's another word I can use, man? What's another? Uh, stance. Yeah, this is the all right, well, this is a stance one. All right. So look, I'm right here. OK. <laughs> the other one's going to be where we drop more on our back foot. So you see where he's at now? So now he's more in a defensive posture. Posture. Yeah, there you go. Posture. He's more in a defensive posture. From this posture, okay, he can work his jab, but he also can set up check hooks, right? He can also be more defensive, right? From that posture, if he sees me loading up with a hook, he could counter or he could drop right under it. See what I'm saying? He's more in that Floyd Mayweather, James Tony type position by posture, by staying right here. Yeah. And then, of course, he can put his weight over his lead leg. Now, from this lead leg, he got sneaky right hands. He's all loaded up on this side so he could come with a hook. Right? Uppercuts. It's more of a dominant posture if you want to have knockout power with your lead hand, right? Because if you ever notice guys like Mike Tyson back in the day, when he drop here, oh, yeah. he's coming with a hard hook. David Tua would do the same thing. Those guys are drop forward, but they're dropping forward slightly on that front leg where I'm, I'm right here in front of you, right? I'm more so in a neutral stance where I can kind of defend and punch. And then if I'm here, I'm more setting a trap. Right, check hooks or dropping under and turning and coming with other shots. So things to understand when I'm fighting and I'm setting a trap, depending on how Eddie's standing is gonna depend on what counter punches he's going to decide to use. You see what I'm saying? Because if I'm standing hands up in the middle with Eddie, right, and we're in the inside and he shoots something to my body, all right, the lead hook is gonna be the easiest shot for me to throw from right here, where if I'm here and I'm, you see what I'm saying? My hook's not really there, but my uppercut's there or something like that. All right, there's something, something extra to add. Well, Zach's like, can I just hit the freaking bag already, man? I just want to punch something. All right, so, all right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at me like that because I'll put you through it. I'm gonna make you do. I'm gonna make you do some conditioning. All right, so y'all check it out. Um, so what were we doing? We were oh, we're lead hand only. Lead hand only, guys. Let's go. Let's work. Left hand. Left hand. Go ahead. Work. Work. <laughs> Let's get it. Hey, champ. Um, I, I I like traditional hand wraps. I don't like the quick wraps, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I don't feel like they protect the wrist enough. The quick wraps are cool, but I would definitely if you I'd use traditional, the Mexican style wraps if possible. 
Eddie, this is a question I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you demonstrate from there. Do you pivot the lead hook when you throw the left hook? This is I mean, I already answered this a bunch of times, but do you pivot your front foot when you're throwing a hook? You do sometimes, but honestly, in the beginning of the training tool I'm talking about, to throw that hook like that. And if you're trying to see off and put as much power as possible in it, I think that's a good idea. But most of the time, I will do this myself and I preach your ass. Everybody does that. When we throw the hook, you look at my toe. I think it's just more so more emphasis put on that inside and turn that hip. Because really, this is where the power is coming. If we're coming from the floor to here, and this is how it's generated. See that there? So turning up the tone kind of emphasizes that a little bit more. Right, right. So, so as a training tool, I know I don't know if you guys can hear Eddie because I got the mic on. I was far away. I was trying to say no, no, I know, I know. But uh, we like the turning of the foot as a way to teach yourself the rotation. Yeah. All right. So if Eddie's working his hook, he'll 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 do it. But the main thing is when he decides to really sit down on a shot, especially to the body, chances are he's probably only going to be rotating that lower half right. of his body. So. And the re and you see the, the heel does come up and he does turn it slightly. The reason why you don't want to pivot, exaggerate the pivot is because of the balance. See, because when Eddie, when Eddie goes ahead and he shoots that shot without a strong pivot, you see he's got his front leg underneath him where his balance is there, where if he wants to shoot another hard shot, wop wop he could shoot it now if he does an over pivot and let's just say he misses for whatever reason yeah. he's going to be out of position for the second shot right. so once you learn how to turn you don't have to do the extra pivot so it's called efficiency and boxing is like anything right like you learn how to do something a certain way and then you learn how to become more efficient at it right so i think that's one thing that we have to understand in boxing and in any area right like when you learn how to do something in the beginning, you're always going to put a lot of energy. It's like amateur boxing. Yeah. Amateur boxing, these guys are out there, and they're, like, all hopping around, and they're here. As you see, guys, professional, they learn to be more efficient. Why? Because they don't want to waste punches. They want to be effective. They're going more rounds. Their stamina, they want the punches to hurt. You learn how to be more efficient. So I hope that answers your question. You guys work that whole – now we're going to add the, everything – but with a strong emphasis on that lead hand, okay? So now they're going to throw the right hand. You get, Everything goes. However, I still want you, that lead hand sets everything up, all right? Let's get it. Sir, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I see you, Zach. You see Zach rolling under after the hook? Yo, Zach's a natural. Look, Eddie, Eddie's starting to get that footwork. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, yep, yeah, keep working, keep working. All right, time. Uh, so right here, so let me get you guys right here, both of y'all. So another thing that I wanted to talk about too is a guy in my community, um, I'm going to just say his name, big shout out to Casey, had a coaching call with him. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I also do mentorships where I will go online, coach you, help you you can show me your sparring show me your heavy bag work whatnot well he was boxing a kid taller than him okay. and then the situation was since the kid was taller than him he was looking up and he was popping his jab up mm -hmm. all right so i made an adjustment for him where i had him slip outside as he's popping his jab okay now eddie if you guys don't know by now has fought guys six 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 seven six eight six, right six, right nine. right so when you're popping a jab what were some of the ideas you like percent definitely lower and what you want to do in my opinion is make them come down to you you don't want to try to go up to fight up at that level. I always say it's to send the, the to in boxing the punch down, especially with your head looking over. But it's also the same thing if you're trying to punch up at a taller fighter, especially from the outside, because we're we're here, we're looking up, our heads up, our chins up, it's exposed. 
Can you get, oh yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish and then I'm gonna ask you another pointer to give. Oh, okay. And it's like, if I was fighting Vladimir and my head was here and I was trying to fight him outside like this, he got a, first of all, he got an opportunity, easy, easy target to, to look at, to aim at. And then I gotta try to fight through what he got going on in order to get inside. But I'm up here doing it. It would be so much better suited for me to be down here. So even, even with the jab, anything you're throwing, if you're a shorter guy, you want to be lower, knees bent, and able to move forward, but even think about angles as well, too. But definitely the jab coming up, shots coming up, but you not coming up with them. I was going to ask you, can you give an other pointer on the chin staying tucked to be tough, yeah. as they're looking up? As they're looking up. So, like, so, so, so demonstrate. There were times that I, I would be throwing punches, but this is when I was in complete control, where my head would be here because you know, I'm, I'm just looking to knock somebody out. But shots like if I'm throwing a jab, it's boom. See, up here, that's why I got really comfortable throwing the up jab. Right hand, like this. A lot of the time, that's another way of doing it. You can, you can once you're inside, of course, now you're... So you're using your peripheral vision. Right, 100%. I'm not looking up like this. Yeah, you're not looking up, all right? That's a very important thing. That chin... Has to get tough. You know, Bernard Hopkins used to do that. He literally be like this. Literally hold the chin. All right. And that goes in like if shots coming, chin's tucked. So like say a right hand came over the top and roll in there. You know what I mean? Like that more so. And using your waist too sometimes. It ain't always. I know we talk about a lot of times they say, oh, you shouldn't be, you should be better than me. You shouldn't be standing like this. Great fighters that really know, they use that waist too. No, uh, yeah. They use that waist too. That, that drop under James Tony, Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? Mostly, even even like looking at Canelo, these dudes use the bend at the waist. Man. You need both. You need that even with your rolls. Mm -hmm. Roll under the shot, keep your chin tucked. Throw your shots off like that. Come up, you'll be able to do so much more that way. Right. You're stressing your knees out all the time. All right. So a good a good way to work that is right now. I'll have Zach. One person could throw. No, y'all going to do this with each other because y'all got gloves on. But I'm going to demonstrate that first. First drill, one person is going to slip outside while you throw the jab. And the reason why I like this drill is because I'm going to throw it as if I think his head's in the center. Right. And you're going to slip and oh, pop oh, your jab. So, But I'm going to keep the hand here. Now, the reason I keep the hand here is because, God forbid, I do make that mistake. I got some added defense as well. So I'm also teaching myself defense as we're working the offense. So the first drill, you'll just throw it, bang. So we'll move around, bang, bang. There you go, just like that. You notice Eddie just yeah. move his head as the shot comes. Eddie's head's here, but now it's here. You see that? Again, I'm shooting to where his head is. By the time I get there, he slips off that line, he throws a jab, and then we'll switch. Okay. All right. So you're gonna go okay. Yeah, there you go. You're going to basically jab at the same time. There you go. <laughs> Dwight Mahaba Kwawi, 100%. So Eddie, Eddie right now is the guy working the slip. <laughs> Now, now, now we're going to have Zach work it. He caught you? Damn, and I turned my face. I turned my face. What did he hit you with? Show me how he landed. You know what? This says a lot about what we do. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally the drill action. Yeah, no, he did not put a jab, and this shit went up and caught me in the middle. Y'all see it coming? I mean, it is. Come on. He tried to slide. He's he trying to slide right now. Of course, I say, come on, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Let's go. Now I'm going to see you too, Mom. I'm going to see what he's trying to do. Let's go. Go. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh
<laughs> and let me tell you something. Hold on, but, but yeah, that, that was nice. That was nice. But yo, check it out. Check you see, y'all saw that setup. We ain't gonna charge y'all for that. That was free of charge. That was free of charge out the Eddie Chambers playbook. Now, now check it out though. We talk about stepping with a jab and not stepping with a jab a lot of times. Let me let me give you my analogy on this. Hold on, let me turn this off. The reason why the reason why Eddie was also able to set that up is because every time that Zach was jabbing, he was stepping with that jab. Sometimes, right? When you pop a jab, pop it from right there, snap it, snap it. You see that? Snap it. Are you still stuck? Still stuck. Don't step. All right. So, all right. So you see how Eddie is finding his jab without the step? If I'm boxing with somebody like Eddie, before I decide to step, I'm probably going to test him with a couple of those because I understand that he's got counter punch capability. So what I want to do is kind of just see where he's at. See, I didn't step there because I want to see what he's going to do. Because if I fully commit and he slips, I'm getting I'm getting countered. So when do you step? When do you not step? It's called reading your opponent. It's called figuring out the patterns. So how do you drill jabbing without stepping i always say you shuffle stop and pop so if i'm right now right look this is what a jab looks like with a step pop right i'm stepping pop that's a full step i could do a half step pop you right but then if i decide to shuffle i can get there pop see how i stopped see that's so i'm here pop so if i'm boxing eddie and we're moving and i kind of just pop i could just throw it out there just to see what he does and then on the second one maybe i step in after I feel that I can land the jab, right? Something that we talked about we're about the Shakur Stevenson situation. The one thing that Shakur did that was great was he made sure he didn't put himself in a position to get hurt, which is something that is underrated in boxing, right? A lot of you guys didn't like his performance. I feel that he could have did more offense as well. However, one thing about the kid, he left that ring safe. And I want to know when's the last time you donated to somebody who has brain damage in boxing. Yeah, any of you guys donate to Pritchard Cologne? What's my other man's name who was supposed to fight Roy Jones, who, uh, fuck, man. Uh, Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan, warrior, warrior, mixed it up. How many of you guys donated to him? Okay, so that's my point. Because when these guys lose their brains in this game, They're left to the wayside. We move forward. Who's the next hot fighter, right? So let that be you in the ring. I'm not not, not talking this to make anybody's feelings get hurt. But what I'm saying is if you're the one boxing, you must think about safety first. Okay, this is why fundamentals are important. This is why knowing your range is important. important. Having good defense is important. Not fighting off of emotion is important. All this shit is important for all you tough guys out there because when you decide to open up and you start getting punched on, you got to go home with that brain damage. Eddie Chambers fought 49 professional fights, hundreds of amateur fights against heavyweights, and he's not the biggest fighter. And he's able to he- speak articulately, articulately, articulate, articulate to you guys without any signs of slurring, slowness, that unfortunately a lot of fantastic fighters over the years who entertained us are dealing with today. And that's what I want for all of you guys out there who decide to take this shit serious. I want you guys to be able to go home to your families. I want you guys to be able to hold a full conversation. I want you guys to start up a business and learn a life after boxing, something that a lot of fighters don't think about when they're in the paint. They only think about fighting. You got to think about what happens when I'm 35, 40, 50, and if things didn't quite work out. Right. So we have to think smart. So as a boxing fan and for you fanagers out there, right, fanagers, you know, what I mean, the fanagers who always want to mix and match fighters and always have the most to say. Hey, man, if you're not the guy in the ring actually getting punched on, sometimes you may want to reconsider because if you're a tough guy and you never boxed before, I'll tell you what, bring you down, I'll put you in the ring with Zach. Let's see how you do with Zach. 
right? And I'm only talking to the guys out there with no experience. If you got experience, fuck that. We ain't putting you in there with Zach. We're going to put you in there with Eddie. But if you got no experience, but you got the most to say, spar with Zach. And let's see how you do. Let's see how many punches you throw against a kid with four or five months experience. I like to see it. Now, if you come in here and you do got more experience than you claim you do, that's okay. We're going to let you whoop Zach's ass. And then round two, we're going to sneak Eddie on you. And if Eddie ain't enough, I got a couple other fighters that'll whoop your ass. So you won't get your ass whooped before you leave the gym. I promise you. So you could be talking tough right now all you want. Then the final boss, Coach Andy. Yeah, you don't want me to get in there. It's going to get ugly. You know what I'm saying? All right, what, what they talking about? What they talking about? <laughs> yes, this is live. This is live, champ. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's all, right, all right, come on, y'all. Let's keep the drill going. Um, yeah. Let me see. Now, let's do some quick Q and A. Let's give some quick Q and A. Anybody got Q and A, man? Let me get that Q and A real quick. What y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna do a light spar? Go ahead, do a light spar. He got to be able to play at first. I'm going to see if he can play. 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 That's how you learn. If anybody got any Q and A's, ask him now, man, and we'll get Eddie and Zach to demonstrate. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> uh, Eddie. Eddie, how do you, Eddie, how do you fight someone who is taller, longer reach, but all they do is throw the one, two, and then and then tie you up if you get on the inside? That's actually difficult as shit. Yeah, it does. Very, I got a lot of experience. Yeah, I know. But I mean, look at Vladimir. If it. it, it. <laughs> The messed up thing about that is if you're in a situation, it, it really depends on where you are and where you're fighting. Um, because with me, when I fought Vlad, obviously we were in Germany. It was his promotion. It was his 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 judges, his everything. Now, that's not to say that he wasn't the one anyway, which he ended up winning anyway by, by knockout in the final round. But what it does is there are things that can happen within the fight that you can't really they normally would be considered illegal or, you know, they would probably frown upon it or try to stop it. That he can get away with because it's his shit. Whereas I'm coming over there and I'm just, you know, a guy that's trying to upset him. I'm trying to do something great in, in, a, in a foreign place, and I'm just, I'm just there. You know what I mean? They're looking to showcase him. So I have a lot to fight against. More than just the fact that he's six foot six, six foot seven, 244 pounds, and I'm only six one, 209, 205 going in there. So I got to not only fight him in the ring, but I also got to fight what's going on outside the ring. And the fact that there's they got they had some control of everything. You know what I mean? With even with the judging, not only with the judging, but with the refereeing as well. So if you watch the fight and like watch this fight also with Pavekin, there was so much clinching. Maybe not as much with my fight, but with him. But Pavekin's a little bit bigger, a little heavier. With me, I was like I said, I'm about, about 205 pounds soaking wet. So he can literally do things with his size, pause. That, that is really difficult for me to deal with just because of my weight. I was just as strong or stronger than anybody that I fought in the ring for the most part. But when there's when the guy outweighs you by that much, and not only is taller, but outweighs you as well. So that, but mean, that's that's your situation. How do you deal with that style? Though? Besides, how, how, besides how, how, Vladimir, let's just say it's another guy who's if, fighting, just you know, right. doing this kind of style. He's just keeping his distance. If you're equal in size than him, then you can start to think about. Other way you could do your weight. Well, he said like, taller. He said yeah, taller. Say, if you're equal in weight, weight, I mean, like if you're the same weight, and say say you're six foot, like like five ten or something like that, and he's six four, but y'all at the same weight. You know what I mean? Depending on his punching power, what he what his skill set is, there are absolutely ways you can deal with a taller fighter. And he was saying like with throwing the one two like that. What I would do was 
I would try to get him to be offensive to a degree, meaning I would maybe start the ball rolling and then try to counter the counter. Because if, you, if you're able to do that, then you're going to be able to get his hands, if you're good enough defensively to do it, get his hands or his shots past your body. Once they're past you, how are they going to hurt you? You know what I'm saying? And once his, if he throws his right hand and, this, and the right hand is literally at your shoulder, which is what I had a lot of times happen with me, then you can then get off what you need to get off. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be able to stay there all day because I'm pretty sure, like you said, they clinch. But you have to do your work as you're going in, as opposed to waiting till you get in, waiting to be tied up. It, when, when the shot goes past you, you got to have something ready to let go. You know what I'm saying? You got to throw something, get them to react, and then you got to be ready to let something go. Because at that point, then all they got to do is look to tie you up. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely, there's definitely more ways than one way to approach that. One way is like Eddie said, you can get them to be offensive. Be the offensive. So maybe you control the outside. You flip it on them. Yeah. Whereas, like instead of you going to him, he had to come to you. Yeah. Right. That's one way. The other way is if you have the skill set and the personality trait and the strength to maybe approach it similar to like a Mike Tyson where mm -hmm. you're just super aggressive, you're throwing hard shots to the body. When they try to tie up, you don't cooperate and you keep punching inside, forcing him to either let go or forcing the referee to break it and then trying to get your shots off that way. Also, if you could get them to lean back a little bit off of some feints, maybe you could drop down, bring a, a hook over the top or something like that. Or you could set up their jab by throwing them, getting them to throw a jab, maybe setting up an overhand, right? But again, you have to have that personality and you have to know how to do these things. You know what I mean? That's, that's honestly, if you watch my fight with Alexander Mishenko in the beginning of the fight, I started literally out from the outside. But the reason I was able to do that is because I was giving a lot of targets take, make, to, and taking them away. I was an extremely elusive target. So when he threw shots and I got the confidence knowing that he can't hit me if I don't let him. You know what I'm saying? And then I started to realize that I can break the range. I was even throwing jabs from the outside at times in that fight with him because I was able to move my head and he had to commit more. Now, look at this. Let's just say I'm the taller fighter. Eddie's a shorter fighter. If I'm taller and Eddie makes it to where I decide I'm going to tee off. Then well, I, not, I, well, I did not. that too. I did that. <laughs> but let's just say you pop your jab. As the taller guy, now he's able to beat me to the jab. How do you beat a taller guy to a jab? Oh. Get him to commit. Get him to overstep. Yeah. Remember when I said I don't like necessarily stepping right off yeah. the rip? Yeah. Get him to step. All right? Get him to commit. Because when you get them to commit, if you could time it, give a target, take it away, and punch at the same time, you can create something. And once you land, though, you have to keep punching to a degree. You can't just land one and be happy with that. I'd probably look for two or three shots. If he ties you up, again, don't cooperate. A lot of times when guys get tied up, they kind of just be like, all right. Make it ugly in their form. Make them want to let go of you. You know what I mean? Get physical in there because if you just let him tie you up, then he's going to keep tying you up. You got to make him, you know. You saw when uh, Tyson tried to lay on Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou wasn't having that shit. He wasn't having it, right? And Tyson knew. This isn't a guy that I could do with what I did to Deontay Wilder. This particular guy, I can't do that because he was physically strung up. But again, you have to be in shape. People ask me all the time about how to do a lot of shit. If you're not in shape to do it, if you don't know how to do it, you're not going to do it. I don't give a fuck what you think you're going to do. It doesn't matter what your brain says. Your body and your mind have to connect. And if you don't have that mind-body connection, no different than lifting weights, it's not going to happen for you in a fight. Is there any other questions, Zach? How long have we been live, by the way? Two minutes. Two minutes. We got eight minutes, y'all, and then we out of here. Guys, make sure you guys go to the website. If we ain't proven that we're bringing great value right now, no days off November, I don't know what else will. I don't know what else will. This is strictly for my private community guys going into 2024. So I really hope you guys take us in, you know, take us on. Um, next time we do something like this, we might have like, I don't know, some sort of a form they could fill out. It'll be like a, uh, a I don't know, some sort of a payment for it. It's not going to be free. Y'all uh, Y'all might think this is free. It's not going to be free forever. You can go all over YouTube, go to your favorite YouTuber that teaches boxing. I want to see them doing this as much as we're doing this or even at this level. If they're doing it, then maybe we might have to compete. But last I checked, I ain't seen nobody doing it. You see what I'm saying? Unless well, now. Now they're going to want to do it. But guess what? If they want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, we could do that. We could do that too. You know, feel me? Any questions? Uh, if it's a dumb question, like someone being disrespectful, just ignore them. Uh, uh, Oh, wait, wait, let's see. Let's see if this is worth. Someone jab away with 
Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, just for footwork or just for footwork. defense in general? It says, it just says, Eddie Tizzle taking someone's job away with All right, so I'm going to have Eddie take away my job. <laughs> 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 okay. Good luck with that. So the, the first step, though, let, 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 let's not make it look so sad. The first step would be to step back. <laughs> Off the step back, he can go left, he can go right. It's really that simple. The step back gets you out of range. You make the decision off the step back what you want to do. Maybe he wants to stop and counter you. You know what I mean? So off the step back, he might bop, he might punch on the way back when I step there if he decides, or he may circle right, or he may circle left. A lot of times when guys step back and they circle left, though, they'll add a slip uh -huh. just in case the right hand comes. So, they, yeah, you see how he moved his head off of that line? Okay, so that's something that happens a lot. But, you know, another way to take it away with the footwork, too, is to give the target and take it away. So let's just say you're popping a jab at me, Eddie. Oh. Go ahead, snap. Yeah, see, see, so, so I'm going to try to read him. Yeah. So what I do is I might give him the jab, see if I can. And notice when I covered up, I kind of did this, but I'm, I understand that he might be setting me up for a hook. And then the second time, I might just do that. And see, now he has to reset. To. You know what I'm saying? So just standing there. and But again, you need experience to be able to even read that body language. As simple as that look, like me just stepping back might look like, oh, yeah, I could do that. When you're in there with an experienced guy who knows how to set those traps, it'd be a little harder to read. So, you know what I mean? I'm able to read it. Eddie's able to read it. But, you know, you do have to practice. So that's why it's good to do drills. You know what I mean? Because drills will help you with that. Yeah, like uh, again, when I tell people to jab going backwards, um, I always tell people to shuffle back, stop, and then pop. I don't really like jab. Even though on a line, I might teach a guy to do this on the line. In a real situation, I'm probably going to have him pop. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. Big space. You see what he did? That's because that, the jab is going to mean something. I see, though, in a, in, in a that red bar, you I train guys to do, to do this only for coordination purposes. But if you're in a situation where a guy is just trying to, like, rush you, you just pop. Yeah, 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 like a flicker and jab. Like just flick it, just get it. And then he'll, 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 he may respect it, but if he doesn't, drop him like it. Mm -hmm. like or check hook. Or check. Or even better. We like did this one on the 2-2 two -two where you're like. <laughs> and then throw that. Oh, shit. Right. Or, yeah, or, or like, you know, <laughs> and then boom. And then check him out of there. Yeah. So, you know, you can work on that. So a simple way you can work on that is just shuffle and jab at the same time if you want to just kind of get comfortable with the, the 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 fundamentals of it just pop you could and you could do that or you could do or you could do like Eddie said and then shoot the right hand notice when he Eddie does that that little extra rock you see that foot so that's the footwork aspect of it because that's where he's going to get the spring to shoot the power shot <laughs> How late should you go on an off day that's expect in the gym? Say it again. How, off, how late should you go on an off day that's expect in the gym? Like, how how light should you go on an off day? Like, 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 like is, does he mean like, I think he, like, like a couple days before the fight or something like that? Just no, no, like, I'm just like, you know, when you're off, you don't, like, you, you know, you're not supposed to work out, but you still go, you go to the box. And get, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's the same kind of thing, like, if you was, like, getting ready for a fight, you're close to the fight. Be the same thing, like, just do floor work, shadow box. Try not to do too much on the bag and punch and stuff heavy. You know what I mean? You don't want to wear yourself down any more than you already do during the week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just listen to your body. Just listen to your body. Like, if you, you know what I mean, just... You know, go through the motions. Don't kill yourself. I mean, if it's your off day, you should be off. But, you know, if you decide that you can't live without being in the gym, yeah, just go and don't force yourself to do the typical workout that you would normally do. Just do whatever your body allows you to that day. That's it. All right, guys, I want to say thank you to everybody who pulled up. I hope this provided enough value for you guys for today. I want to say thank you to everybody. And again, I will be raising the price on the Black Friday sale this week. I hope you guys take advantage of that. And um, again, thank you for the love and support. Right, so What's going on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony. And of course, none other than world-class professional fighter, Fast Eddie Chambers. Black Friday, everybody's favorite time of the year. But why are we going to wait? We ain't waiting until Black Friday. I want to give you guys the 
biggest opportunity that I have ever given to grab all 16 of my masterclass courses for over 90% off. I've sold these courses previously for $300 a pop, and now you can grab all 16 for less than the price of one. I want you guys to head over to CoachAnthonyBoxing.com, and if you want to grab one course at a time, you can also grab those courses for only $47. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this sale is not going to last. So what I'm going to need you to do is go to the website and grab it now because as soon as I raise the prices, not only am I going to raise the prices, I'm going to charge more than I've ever charged because the value inside of these courses are second to none. Oh, and how can I forget? Every single person who grabs the Master Boxing Bundle is going to get enrolled to the CA Boxing University, which is a private community where you can upload your sparring, ask questions 24-7, show your heavy bag work, basically share your journey with a bunch of like-minded people. This is a no-brainer, guys. So you guys already know what to do. CoachAnthonyBoxing.com. Box Mike.